Bonjour Genie Engineers, welcome to my Problem A Day series. In this video, we're going to calculate the relative compaction. This question can actually be a little bit too long for an FE exam. However, I just want to cover it with you guys just in case if you get something similar. It is also an important question if you're actually taking soil mechanics class. Now, if you're here for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. We're giving the results of the sand cone test, which are shown here. So usually with sand cone test, what we do is that we, we take a jar with sand and we have a cone, right? So we measure the sand uh, with the jar and that's what we're given here, the initial weight of sand cone filled with test which is uh, test sand, which is equal to 13.5 pounds. Then we go to the site and we excavate where the soil is compacted and we excavate um, a hole of soil and we measure it, we weigh it, and that usually gives us the weight of the soil from the test hole because that's, that's the one that was excavated, which equals to 2.85 pounds. And then what we do is we take this the, the jar of sand that we brought in with us with the cone and then we put the cone on the jar and then we flip it in the hole and we try to to uh, fill up the hole that we excavated with the sand that we initially had and that's and then we measure uh, we measure the final weight after we filled the the test hole and that gave us 10.7 pounds. And then in addition, we already know the unit weight of the dry uh, of the dry sand that we brought with us, which is why they call it test sand, because that that's the the sand that we use as a test to uh, determine the unit weight of the field of the soil that was compacted. So the 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 unit weight of the dry sand is eighty pounds per cubic feet. And then the moisture content of the soil from the test hole is fifty. 15.5%. This one we just, again, we do, uh, we test it in the lab and we get the water content. And then the Proctor test maximum dry density, same thing, we do testing in the lab and that's equals to 118.7 pounds per cubic feet. So that's pretty much what the sand cone test uh, results are. So from here, we need to find the relative compaction in percentage. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, as the usual, we're going to write the equation for the relative compaction, which is right here. So I have gamma D field, and then that's divided by gamma D max. Gamma dry max multiplied by 100 because we want percentage. Now, gamma D max we have that's equals to 118.7. That's already given to us. All we need to do is find the unit weight of the field, the dry unit weight of the field soil. And this is why we use the sand cone test to get this term so we can find the relative compaction. So now let's try to uh, determine the density, uh, the dry density field. So I have gamma D F is equal to um, gamma over one plus the water content. So this equation is not given to you here. Um, I did mention in the previous video that some of the equations you would not be given or they're not on your NCS handbook. And that's why I recommend that you have a cheat sheet and write all the equations that are important and that you might get it in the test. We use this equation a lot when we're dealing like in construction or soil. And it's, it's really easy one. Just this is how I remember it. If I have gamma D, and I have gamma here, I know that gamma needs to be larger than gamma D, and I know the uh, the relationship between them has to do with water, right? Because gamma dry has no water content, and then gamma has some water content. And so since this has to be larger, so if you divide this by one plus your water content, which is usually point something, because it's uh, you take the water content, you have to divide it by percentage. So let's say if it's over here, we have what's our water content was given 15.5. So you do uh, 1 plus 0.15. So that gives you 1.15. So if you take this number, you divide it by that, that gives you a smaller gamma D. So that's how I remember it. Uh, I hope this method helps you remember it. I'm not sure. But 
I think it's important to remember and then keep it in your cheat sheet. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, so we have this, right, water content, but I don't have my gamma, so I'm still stuck, but it, it's not that bad because we need, we can find gamma from all these numbers that we're giving to us. So the first thing we're going to do is what is uh, defined gamma, right? Gamma is equal to the weight divided by the volume. So the weight of the excavated soil is 2.85 pounds, right? So remember how I said earlier, we excav excavated a hole and we weigh it and that's the weight of the soil. So that's 2.85 pounds. Okay, but we don't have the volume of the field soil. That was not given to us. So this we need to find. Okay, so let's, let's uh, do another equation and try to solve V field. We're going to use the weight of the sand and we're going to divide it by the gamma of the sand. Because, uh, so the weight of the sand, that was how much it was, uh, we put in the sand, remember, in the hole that was excavated. So if we do that, so if we, let me write it down. So we have weight of the sand that was in the hole, right? That was that filled up the excavated hole. And if we take that and we divide it by our gamma of the sand, which is given to us 80, we can easily find the volume of of the of the hole itself, how much volume was excavated. Because we have the weight, but we don't have the volume. Okay, so the weight of the sand is going to be 13.5 minus 10.7 pounds. So the reason, so what I did here is I subtracted, I took the initial weight of the sand with the jar and I subtracted with the final. The, that, and that would give us how much sand was poured in in the excavated hole. Okay, and then you divide that by the density, which is 80 pounds per cubic feet. And this is giving is going to give you an answer of cubic feet because pounds cancels with pounds and then you're left with cubic feet. Okay, so that gives you an answer of 0 0.035 cubic feet. Okay, so we're going to go back here and plug in V field for 0 0.035. So I have 2.85 pounds divided by 0 0.035 cubic feet. So I'm going to get an answer of 81.4 PCF or pounds per cubic feet is the same thing. Once you get that, then you can just plug it in here. So I have 81.4 PCF and then you divide it by 1 plus 0 0.55 or 155. And this gives you an answer of 70.5. See you guys how this is smaller than this? So that's that's just a, a way you can uh, memorize this, this equation. Okay, and then once you've, you've figured out gamma df, then you can just plug it in here. So you have 70.5 PCF, you divide it by gamma d max, which is 118.7 PCF, you multiply it by 100, you get a relative uh, compaction of 59.4. Now, as we mentioned earlier, usually a contractor want to achieve a relative compaction of between 90% to 95%. So this is not good. So I'm going to write not good. So need some more work done and need some more compaction to be an adequate uh, soil for for building. Okay guys, so that was the last problem we're going to cover on phase relationships. Next time we cover something on geotechnical engineering, it is going to be about foundations. And don't forget, a problem a day keeps the F away. If you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. À la prochaine!